Now, here are your hosts, Chris Tidwell and Brady Weta. Well, let's 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 shift gears a little bit, shall we? And let's talk about some professional wrestling. And I got a question for you, Brady. Is there a bigger stooge than this guy in the world of professional wrestling? For our listeners, by this guy, guy, I am talking about none other than Brady's best friend, Dave. What? No, no, I fired Dave. Oh. Uh, Okay, my bad. Let me take that. Rid of Dave. Let me take that back then. No longer Brady's best friend. I've never Brady's knew roommate. him. I don't Brady's know Dave. Dave Meltzer. No, I've never met. If I lived in the picture that you have up on the screen right now, so ladies and gentlemen listening on uh, on your on your hearing gimmicks, you're not watching this. It's a picture of Dave. Yeah, there you go. It's laugh away, Chris. There's a picture of Dave Meltzer sitting in a room of just utter chaos. It looked like yeah. somebody. It looked like Waco happened, and they're trying to get rid of the evidence. Like, what is going on behind him here? Well, I mean, listen, it's no it's no secret that if this is the kind of squalor that he keeps his office in right now, then there's it's obvious why he's getting so many reports wrong lately. Yeah, he's mixed up a bit. Okay, so I no, I have to clarify. I don't know Dave Meltzer. I've never – actually, I did meet Dave once. But I, I don't know Dave Meltzer, and when I bought SME Radio – uh, off of off of some people. Dave was on the show, was on the TSN show. Our TSN show that plays on, you can check it out on TSN or wherever uh, uh, you get your TSN radio every Sunday night. And Dave used to have a segment on that show, which started originally on your show, The Law, Live Audio Wrestling. Uh, and just, he, he, the very first thing I did was get rid of, just get rid of Dave. Yeah. Well, it was the smartest thing that you did, if you ask me. There's, there's no, there's no secret that uh, for years and years and years, uh, Dave Meltzer, ha- there has been a love-hate relationship with people like him in the world of professional wrestling. A lot of fans love him because he gives them all of the little dirty things that's going on in the business. And to each their own. Anybody who likes Dave, I'm not shitting on you. You're allowed to like who you like, whether you like Cornette. Dave or anything in between those polar, you know, those opposite. uh, It's just when someone's a fucking liar and just does shit for no reason and he fucks with the boys and he's doing it for a paycheck and saying he's not, that's when the merit of your character and the merit of your news and media and whatever you report is thrown out the fucking window. When your whole job is to make excuses. And that's what this is now. He's got a full-time job backtracking. Which is crazy if you think about that. It's fucking now, nuts. What we're talking about, the latest one seems to be where inside of TNA Wrestling, okay, um, it looks like he was reporting after the big shakeup in office. He's reporting that Tommy Dreamer is the new head of creative. Unbeknownst to Tommy Dreamer, of course, yeah. because that's not the case. No. So it's almost it's almost like guys like this, guys that you know refer to themselves as journalists inside of this industry, are not. You're just making stuff up. You're clickbaiting. That's all you're doing. You're trying to get people to click onto your shit, and it's got to the point to where I don't even think if you care if you lie about it to get them to click on it because all you think you have to do is just say, "Oh, my bad. They changed the direction." Oop your head. Yeah, well, yeah, oop your forehead. And uh, while you're at it, I will give you a little bit. I'll, I'll give you, to play the devil's advocate here. Sure. Let's say they're not making shit up. Okay. Some of these guys out there. And it's not just Dave. There's a lot of them. Of and course. There's really, good, there's really good journalists. There's really good broadcasters. There's really good podcasters. There's really good guys who just report the news as they hear it. Mm-hmm. Guys like Dave who do the dirt sheet thing. They may be getting these reports from people and thinking it's truth. The right. problem is, is once they're told something, and this is if they're not making it up, once they're told something, they run it as the gospel. Mm-hmm. And they don't do any research or look into it or wait around for a second to see if there is some truth. And maybe they do hold stuff back that they hear and they're like, well, I don't say everything that I know. And that makes me no. At the end of the day, you're a fucking stooge. There's yeah. stooges in all of these companies. There's stooges always in wrestling. 
but I, I don't I think your original question was is there a bigger stooge in wrestling I don't think so no no and this is coming off of the heels where clearly somebody in the TNA locker room is also a stooge or stooges if you will because if you saw the reports Brady you saw that a letter came out this past week no. a letter that was that was penned by um by some people or persons inside of the TNA locker room sent to Len and Scott. And I'm talking about uh, the people who, you know, of course, Scott Demore being let go. And we're talking about Len Asper, the owner of Anthem. And they were talking about how they, you know, this is their, their, their undying devotion and love and to Scott Demore and how Scott should be back there. And, and we've all signed this thing and, I can tell you point blank from a few that I have talked to inside of that locker room, they had no idea that this letter went out. They had no idea that it was being written and they did not sign it. Now, that doesn't mean that they don't like Scott in any way, shape or form. They were just not part of the process. But in doing so, that means that when this private letter talking about business came out exposing the things that happen in the business. It only gets out one of two ways, people. It either gets stolen or somebody stooged it out there. And if that's the case, then that means your locker room, your TNA locker room, listen up, ladies and gentlemen, all of you people, boys and girls that are working in that business and especially working in that company right now, you've got a stooge inside of your locker room. And it's going to be a detriment to you before it's any kind of a help to you. Because in doing so, this is my belief and only my belief in my opinion in doing so in sending this letter out, what you've done is you've made, you put the jobs of everybody else that is not involved in this. You put their jobs on the line too, <clears throat> because if I'm Anthem and if I look at this letter coming to me and I say, oh, I've got a handful of disgruntled employees. You know what? Y'all can go. I'll let you out of your contracts and you can beat it. No problem. But know this, that every other single person on that locker room has been now put on notice. And if you want to pipe up, you can pipe up. If you cause too many problems for Anthem, then Anthem very well is going to just turn around and say, you know what the most important thing to us is? It's not the staff. It's not TNA wrestling as putting on live shows and events for our, for our five viewers on our multitude of channels that we have that nobody watches. It's the library. And you know what they don't need to sell the library? The people that have jobs. So they kill the whole thing off and just sell the library, cut their losses, take their money, and run. All because they don't want to deal with the headaches that somebody, a stooge, inside of that locker room is causing. It's a bad thing because now you're going to have people that are constantly going, well, shit, what's going to happen with my job now? And I don't know. But I think that things have got to get better very quickly. And we're going to find out because coming up, they've got their first, they've got their first real pay-per-view back together, right? Since all of this news has come out. So let's see how that locker room really is. But it's going to be very depressing for some of them who are looking across the locker room going, are you a stooge? Did you stooge this out? The family dynamic that they preached for so long. There's a crack in it, ladies and gentlemen. There's a crack in it, and it was caused from the inside, not the outside. I, I don't mean to segue, but I really like the mood that you're in right now. Tell me about the Montreal screw job again from backstage. It's a work. <laughs> God, work. Anyways, I need to take a breath here. He just dives in and does it. I think he's lost it. Anal wrestling rain man. Uncle Dave. I don't know what else to say. Here comes the dynamic dude, Dave Meltzer, fellow kids. And he just dives in and does it. I think he's lost it. Anal wrestling rain man. Uncle Dave. I don't know what else to say. Here comes the dynamic dude, Dave Meltzer, fellow kids.